A recent study has come out that shows that by 2040, Spaniards are going to be the longest lived people in the world with an average age of about 86 years. So, okay, in Spain we have the Mediterranean diet, but also don't we drink too much, smoke too much, and generally live the high life? What's going on? Let's find out. Venga, let's go. Hey guys, I'm James Blick. And I'm Yolanda Martin. And welcome to Spain Revealed. This channel is all about helping you explore Spain like a local. And I know we do the videos where we're out in the tapas bars in Madrid and exploring this country, but every three videos or so, we welcome you into our home so we can talk about uh, the culture in this country and give you an insight into what it's really like uh, life here from an expat's perspective. And from a Spanish perspective. There we go. So today, life expectancy. So an article came out or a study came out in The Lancet, this medical journal I think it was at the end of last year and it said that by 2040 Spaniards will be the longest lived people in the world with an average age uh, or average life expectancy of 85.8 years currently Spain is in fourth place with 82.9 and so we thought this was something pretty interesting something worth talking about so we did some reading and we settled on four different areas that really impact on this long life expectancy in Spain and we want to talk about them but what are those four areas Yoli so that's a uh, diet a uh, physical exercise, a public health system, and social and cultural reasons. Okay, so the famous Mediterranean diet. This diet uh, that is the traditional diet here in Spain and other Mediterranean countries like mm. France and Italy. I mean, it's sold a billion cookbooks and recipe books and, and diet plans, I'm sure. It's a diet that's full of fresh fruit and vegetables. Yeah. Uh, a lot of legumes, you know, chickpeas, things like that. It's it's low on meat. Uh -huh. There's a lot of fish. Yeah. It's also a diet with olive oil instead of a lot of butter. Mm -hmm. It's a diet with, diet with not many processed foods. It's a diet with a little bit of wine, but not too much. So why is this diet good for us? Well, to start with, actually, uh, it keeps your brain healthy. Mm -hmm. uh, there is less uh, cognitive decline. Mm -hmm. And also it keeps your, well, your heart healthy. Okay. And also keeps you slimmer. Okay, yeah. so it kind of has a, an all all over effect when you're thinking about food here so much of uh, what is wonderful about Spanish Spanish cuisine is it's so simple it's simply a prawn grilled with a little bit of salt on it some olive oil yeah. you're getting hungry you know tapas bars that will have salads that are just tomatoes mm -hmm. and and I think fruit and vegetables are really easily accessible here there's markets everywhere uh, or if you go to a bar and you're gonna have a menu del dia you know a daily yeah. uh, fixed price menu you will always be able to have a pretty balanced diet within yeah. that menu. There will be vegetables, there will be fish, fish options, yeah. there'll be meat as there'll well, be meat, yeah. and there'll be often fruit for dessert. Actually, yeah. often it's very funny, the desserts <laughs> won't, you know, there'll be the option of like flan and things like that, but there'll often be an option which is just like, an apple yeah. or a banana. And, and they, you get the apple on the plate. Exactly. They will literally bring the apple on your plate. So I think when you're eating out, it's really easy to, to eat healthily. But what about eating at home? Now, let's talk about your parents. We always like to bring in your parents uh, into today's... <laughs> my mom, my mom especially. Yeah. Exactly. Your mother especially. <laughs> so we eat there a lot. And obviously, she, she grew up eating the traditional Mediterranean diet, yeah. right? Yeah. Lots of pulses, I guess. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, lots of... Um, Cereal uh, yeah. as well, uh, olive oil, you know, like, you know, not so much butter, I don't think. No. Yeah. And not much meat when she not was growing up in her no, village. No, no, And then fish, yeah, maybe like once or, or twice a week. Nowadays, they pretty much follow that, that diet. So when we eat at your parents' house, yeah. there is usually a, a strong vegetable component. There'll be, you know, there will be quite a lot of meat uh, yeah. often, uh, mm -hmm. which is maybe a bit of a change that's come yeah. from Spain becoming a wealthier Having country. More money, yeah. Exactly. But mm -hmm. still fish is, you know, yeah. twice a week. Yeah. And also, you know, for, for dessert, Dessert, there'll always be fruit on the table. And always a salad. And always a salad, yeah. exactly. So I think where we got to is that Spain has this Mediterranean diet yeah. and it's a very healthy diet. It's still very ingrained. There's still a lot of mm. home cooking. These are things that are all important, but it is changing. And I think one of the things that was interesting about what this report said, mm. it said that Spaniards will be the most longest lived people in the world if current customs continue. Sure. Mm -hmm. So they're changing a little bit, yeah. right? So for example, in the last 20 years, right. obesity has doubled in wow. Spain. That's, and yeah, childhood wow. obesity is 13, 14, 14 yeah, 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 exactly, 14%, mm. so that's rising. Yeah. And so although your mother is eating a lot of really wholesome home-cooked food, processed food is rising here in Spain. Yeah, so here in Spain, we have 20% uh, of all the food we eat is uh, processed food, mm. uh, versus, for example, in Portugal, is 10%. 
and in France is 14%. So we're not necessarily as healthy as other countries around us that have a similar diet. Although what's interesting is in the UK, the, the percentage of processed food in people's diets is 50%, so much higher. So we have to be a little bit careful. We have this Mediterranean diet, it's really helping us you know, live longer and become the longest lived people in the world. But things are changing, yeah. tendencies are changing a little bit. So what are your thoughts? Let us know in the comments below. Do you live in Spain? Do you think you're still eating the Mediterranean diet? Is it changing? I'd love to hear. Yeah. A little footnote before we move on to physical exercise. I read an interesting statistic that said that Spaniards are really big smokers still. And so, man, if we quit smoking, we're gonna live forever. Uh, maybe we'll live to 90 years old by the time it's 2040. Uh, we smoke about three times more than the British, for example. Wow. So that's still something that, that surely is holding us back. So exercise is the next one. Now, this is a really interesting one because it's not as clear cut as it might sound from the get go. You know, in New Zealand, for example, I yeah. really had the experience of my groups of friends and people around me, kind of everyone exercised. It was an exercising going, country. Going to a gym. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Gyms were big, you know, yeah. jogging, all this sort of stuff. Yeah. And when I moved to Spain, I didn't see as many people exercising in that more kind of formal exercise kind of way. You know, yeah. I'm going to get up and jog or I'm going to mm. go to the gym. People and things would look like at that. you, right? People would stare at me funny. When, I mean, it, it, I don't want it to sound weird because people jog here and jogging yes. is a big thing. But I feel like it, it's grown in the last few years. And particularly when we moved here eight years ago, sometimes people would look at me a bit funny when I was jogging. You know, <laughs> I'd be jogging on the spot waiting to cross the, cross the street, you know, waiting for the light to change. People just would stare at me particularly older people who weren't as used to seeing that kind of exercise. Yeah. Spaniards do exercise a lot more uh, than other countries, but it's exercise that happens within your daily routine. Exactly. Yeah. So about 75 odd percent of people walk for 10 minutes or more four times a week. Yeah. Doesn't sound like a lot, but I think compared to potentially other countries when people are much more sedentary or using their cars a lot mm -hmm. more, we have a lot more exercise kind of just within our daily routine. Yeah. And another thing is that just over a third of people go to work either walking or, or on a bicycle, uh -huh. which I was a bit surprised about. I know, yeah, yeah. Does that bicycle. sound like to you? Well, I have friends who actually, you know, ride bikes to work. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But I think what's interesting is when I think about your mother, for example, mm. back on Yoli's mother, we'll have to do a compilation one day of everything you <laughs> say about your mother, uh, your poor mother. Um, but she she's, does so many things. Exactly, so, so busy. busy. <laughs> but, but, you know, she walks a lot because she walks to the market. Yeah. Uh, she shops every day. Yeah. Often after lunch, if we have a big lunch, that we will go for a walk yeah. as a family. Yeah. Um, but she was told a few years back by her doctor that she should do exercise. Exercise and actively. Actively. Yeah, going, you know. And it was very yeah. foreign to her, the idea, right? Yeah, it is still nowadays. I mean, she now goes to the town gym sort of thing and she goes there, you know, and takes a class of like a gymnastics sort of thing. Yeah. Uh, and she still doesn't like the whole sweating thing. She feels kind of weird about sweating. Yeah. She doesn't like it. I, she thinks it's unhealthy. That's right. I remember when you said that she had started doing exercise that a doctor had recommended and she called you up and she was like, uh, but I don't think this is good for me. I'm sweating. I'm sweating. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like, no, 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 mom, it's good. You know, sweating is good. I've told her that many, many times. But I think <laughs> what that shows is that if people are active traditionally in this country, but in ways that aren't, they're not consciously exercising, it's just yeah. within their daily life. Yeah. You know, we are not as, particularly in Madrid and our life here and their life, not as car dependent. Uh, we have great public transport system. Yeah. And if you're going to work on public transport, you're walking more as well. You got to walk yeah. to the metro. Exactly. And, and you know, walk the corridors and yeah. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So if you're living in Spain, do you think that exercise is something that we do just naturally? Are more people exercising? We'd really love to hear your thoughts and opinions in the comments below. All right, on to the next one, which is controversial, the public health system. So one of the reasons stated about why we're going to live to almost 86 years old uh, on average by 2040 is that we have a great public health system that's free in mm -hmm. this country. Yeah. Now the public free public health is actually enshrined in the Spanish Constitution. Mm, article number 43. Article 43, <laughs> free public health for all. So my experience of it, I haven't been really, really sick here, um, but I've had a good experience so yeah. far. As a Kiwi, we have high skin cancer rates. Uh, I get a yearly free checkup from a skin doctor as mm. part of that system. That's been my main kind of experience. Yeah. The waiting rooms aren't the prettiest in the world. No. It's very functional, yes. but that's fine with me. As yeah. long as the doctor's good, I've had really good experiences with doctors Big so far. Big shout out to doctors and nurses and yeah. Yeah, you've had a good experience so far, public yeah. health. Yeah, yeah, I really I really like it. I think it's uh, yeah, it works, um, you know, I think it, there is a lot of um, investment in it and I think it's very, very important. And the fact that it's free, is amazing. You could spend a week in hospital and you don't pay anything. Yeah. And so I think that that 
obviously contributes to this life expectancy. It also means there's less anxiety around the idea of can I pay for my exactly. health? Exactly, if I'm ill. Yeah, if exactly. I'm ill, exactly, mm -hmm. which is I think something really, you know, it's gives huge. it peace of mind. Yeah. But one thing that's just really important here to realize is that it has changed. So we have had an economic crisis, you know, over the last 15 years in this country, you know, things are getting better and, you know, but it's not necessarily returning to pre-crisis levels. No, no so, it's not. I actually read, um, mm. you know, for primary care, for example, uh, now we spend 15% mm. less in primary care. Yeah. So that, of course, translates in, um, you know, cuts in general, you know. Yeah. Less, and primary less. care is a people thing. It's less yeah. doctors, less, at, doctors, less, less family nurses, doctors, yeah. having the less time and things like that mm. so we're gonna have to be really careful in Spain to make sure we we preserve that that constitutional right to free public health which yes. is the thing that's helping us live to to be the longest lived people in the world okay number four this this is a reason that's a little harder to pin down about why we might you know become the longest lived people in the world and that's about social and cultural reasons particularly our connectedness our friendship groups our family groups and how connected we are to those those family and friends and I actually think this is a huge one yeah but I think it's hard to study so we'll just have to talk about our experience of what this means yeah. well one thing that you'll notice here for example is that the extended family is a really strong concept mm -hmm. I always remember when we moved here and you would talk about your primos your cousins my cousins my first and second and third cousins and I think it shows that the, the extended family becomes this one big group yeah. and you feel very connected to all of yes, them yes you know it's a family extended family huge uh, you know like strong um, connections yeah exactly and so we'll often you know have lunches uh, you know where your extended family might be there and there's this cousin that cousin you'll be talking about your childhood and people stay together in yeah. that sense so I think a really good example of the strength of the extended family network mm. is that when the uh, economic crisis here started in 2008 or so you know we shot up to about 25% unemployment now can you imagine in your country uh, if you're not from Spain what that would be like would there be a revolution would the whole country break down yeah. and this yeah. country kept going yeah. uh, which kind is of, phenomenal held together, held together. <laughs> yeah. you know it was challenging but there were grandparents living with their children and their grandchildren all in one in home the same home yeah. in the same home on it, their same pension exactly yeah. on the grandparents pension everybody yeah. had moved home yeah. and so there was this kind of social safety net because of the strength of the extended family yeah. I think it shows that you know the extended family here is really strong yeah uh, and what about friendship groups I feel like that's really strong here yeah, as well. well you know for me for example I mean I have a young you know quite a huge network of friends you know big groups uh, you always talk about how you know when we're walking past a maybe like a tapas bar and they have like an outside area yeah. you know with tables there's these huge tables you know oh. like with maybe like 15 people eating and drinking and, it you is know, and it's yeah huge group of friends yeah I think um, here people are, are more likely that to hang on to their their school group of yes, friends yeah and you do have several groups as well you exactly know? So I have my you know school friends and I have my university friends and then I have some other you know flamenco friends, friends and then my flamenco friends as well so yeah three four big groups of people and I have about three friends Sorry, <laughs> I'm teasing no but I think what's interesting is that yeah you have these big groups of friends and you'll hang out together you have a whatsapp group together yeah uh, and you have a really rich social life with them yeah. and I just think that that makes you kind of gives you a lot to live for oh, a lot of joy you know and exactly. then I guess it takes worries away and I guess that worries you know can be really bad for your health so exactly and when I see these people eating together and these big groups of friends in there and they'll all be you know having this long lunch I think it also reflects on the fact that and this is a little bit the food side as well that mm. when we do have big long lunches uh, we talk you know and we have you know hours sitting at the table speaking and then we have the sobre mesa which is where after your meal you'll you know start drinking gin tonics and you will literally you know sit there for hours talking and yeah. so that's really really strong uh, and one thing I was reflecting on as well is even in this country you feel more connected to strangers mm -hmm, mm. so we were yesterday we have a friend visiting at the moment and we went to the Cebada market in Madrid where on the Saturdays at about 1 p.m. the fishmonger starts selling off all their seafood and cooking yeah, it up right down write that down well, great one. tip it's actually got a video about that I'll link to it up above uh, but what's really interesting is that you know we would be standing next to someone and this could happen in a tapas bar as well and mm. you just strike up a conversation yeah and there's something for me personally is striking up a conversation with a stranger gives me a feeling of warmth 
yes. uh, connectedness to other people and not feeling very isolated. And mm. I know if you know if I was in a culture where, where if I'm in a restaurant or a bar and I know I kind of culturally can't talk to that person next to me, sure. I don't know, I wouldn't enjoy it as much. So I mm. think this is a really, really important aspect. And maybe there's this kind of last little element around this cultural and social aspect mm. that people are just a bit kind of happier and more optimistic in this country. Totally, I'm a huge optimist. I mean, yeah, very, very positive. Yeah, I think so. I mean, we did a video on Spanish stereotypes and mm -hmm. I can't remember if we touched on that one exactly, but we kind of talked about yeah, the kind of, of mm -hmm. outgoingness and things like that. But there is a piece of data which I found which I thought might be interesting. So the University of Vermont, a professor there, did a study of 100,000 words of the top 10 most spoken languages in the yeah. world uh -huh. and found that Spanish was out of all these 10 languages was the most positive language. Mm, People go. were more likely to more commonly use languages uh -huh. like uh, words like love or laughter versus other words like sad and crying. Mm. So, I isn't mean, that beautiful? Isn't that beautiful? Interesting little study. So, mm. again, that idea that maybe we are just a bit more positive and that helps contribute to, to how long we live. I don't know, this is a really complex one here. So, I'd love yeah. to know, you know, if you've visited Spain, if you live here, what do you think about this? Is it the social cultural stuff that really does kind of get us over the hump you know once we've also got the good diet and all that sort of stuff is it is it this little last little piece that's actually maybe the most important as i think it might be yeah. so guys if you're really curious about exploring spain like a local check out the videos on this channel there's so much content we're constantly trying to make more uh thank you for stepping into our home again yes. and well i don't know we wish you a really long, long life, life a long life and, and <laughs> happiness wherever you live thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video Hasta Hasta luego. Pronto.